Considering there are quite a few of you newer people who have started playing Princess Connect, I feel like it was kind of a good time to start these clan battle preparation videos again. And so to all of you newer people, welcome to our next clan battle. And for our veterans, welcome back to the sheep. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about clan battle, how exactly we can prepare. I'm going to be definitely going through a whole bunch of stuff for the veterans and then going through stuff for the beginners as well. And so my veterans, if you do want to like stick around after I've cleared through all of the vet stuff, do like kind of give some tips and catch me out on anything that I did say wrong. However, without further ado, let's jump into the content and starting off with each of these bosses. Okay, and so in this clan battle, clan battle 13, we will be facing facing Wiven, Rai Rai, Mushushu, Mushusu, Mushusu, Nightmare, and Mesatham. And on top of that, we are going to be getting three laps. I know it says like lap one and then two to three. It realistically is lap one to three because if you have a look at these like defense values and HP values, as well as the levels, you will see that they are pretty much identical. So three laps, one, two over here and then three down here and so i want to go through each of these bosses and especially for the newer players tell you how to deal with each of their mechanics and so to start things off let's talk about wyvern first so i'm going to come over to this tab in which i've used the unit selector and so for wyvern primarily his shtick is kind of the same he just does a lot of physical damage and so from a new player perspective you're going to be looking at trying to use a tank up the front a physical tank whether it be like miyako or jun or literally anyone that can like withstand him and then a whole bunch of physical dps's as well as defense down speaking of which i am going to introduce you guys to a spreadsheet that many of us know and love that i have not updated in about eight or six months and it is this guy over here in which we have a whole bunch of team compositions for clan battle now a lot of these comps like there are very very much early game comps you would not see like end game players using these however especially in the context of like not having Mimi or not having christina and other factors like that this is essentially like what you can build with the permanent units. But I do know that a lot of you have like the Christinas, the Mimis, the Vishizus and all of that. So hopefully you'll be able to build something better than this. All right, so coming back over here to Wyvern, in a nutshell, again, he just does a whole bunch of physical damage. As long as you can get through the physical damage and like throw a whole bunch of DPSs and P defense down on him, you'll be good. And so what exactly do I mean by P defense down? So physical defense down, as you can see these guys over here. In addition to like your Jun, Makoto, Shinobu, as well as your Mitsuki, you've also got other the units that that are like summer kokoro christina and so forth in a nutshell a physical defense shred is exceptionally important for fighting these bosses because if we have a look at these stats it's actually quite a fair bit 200 physical defense and then it's going to go up to 300 400 500 depending on how far you can get all right and so that's pretty much it for wyvern over here let's have a look at the second boss which is rai rai so here we've got rai rai and as you can see down here from her skill set she deals moderate magical damage to all enemies and also deals small magic damage to enemies in an area under the rear guard so what this is saying is that on the ub she deals moderate magical damage to everybody and then she also like occasionally does some small magic damage to the rear guard and a lot of the time this could be hitting like your archers or like your mages and so what this means is that you have to have a way of dealing with this magical damage whether that be by using shields like magical shields which yukari and uh new year's ray provides new year's ray is actually fantastic because she also taunts and other units like that to mitigate the magical damage the alternative is to actually take those hits gain tp and then heal it back up after so perhaps aoe healers and so that is rai rai in a nutshell so let's move on to mushushu so in regards to mushushu i believe this is the first time that we are actually fighting him so veterans you do have to pay a little bit of attention so for his ub he does moderate magical damage to all enemies which is us and reduces the tp of all enemies who uses magic attacks and so what you are going to find is that we're predominantly going to be using physical comps against mushushu and actually in like this entire cb which i will explain a little bit later otherwise periodically he is going to deal small damage to a small area around the enemy and then also lower our magic defense again this is very similar to rai rai who is doing magical damage so you could definitely use your new year's ray or like your kuka to tank a magical tank and you could certainly use your yukari over here as well and so my guys remember the shtick for this guy reduces the tp of all enemies who uses magic attacks 
Don't use anybody who uses magic attacks. Physical attackers, okay? All right, moving on. Next, after Mushushu, we have Nightmare over here. So it's the horsey guy again. Ha-ho. <laughs> okay, so this is an interesting one where Nightmare deals massive magic damage to the enemy with the highest physical attack and massively reduces their TP. It is actually a really, really big nuke. And for newer players, it is most certainly going to chunk your best DPS. Like it could be your Eriko, etc., etc. And so how you actually deal with this one is that you need an on-demand taunt, which Nozomi has. So what that means is that you need to go through the trial of Nightmare first and then figure out the points at which he does this massive magic damage attack. It's a massive UB, it's a massive spike, you will know like when you see it. And then write down those timings so that when you go into the battle next time and you have your Nozomi, you can use your Nozomi's taunt to take that massive magic damage so that it doesn't actually target the enemy with the highest physical attack which again is probably like your Eriko Yui or like your Suzuna or Shiori or your Christina or literally somebody that you just don't want them to die. Otherwise, you definitely could try your luck with New Year's Ray again or Kuka. Uh, I think it's okay, just make sure that it actually works. But generally speaking, we do use Nozomi. Alternatively, if you are mid game, you certainly could use like a strong single target heal. So Summer Kokuro, hope that this massive magic damage doesn't kill that DPS and then use the Summer Kokuro to heal that DPS up. All right, and so moving on to the second one deals moderate magic damage to all enemies in an area around the enemy with the highest physical attack and inflicts curse. So moderate magic damage, this again, you're going to be looking at your Yukari, you're going to be looking at your New Year's Ray, or you're going to be dealing with it with an AoE healer. All right, so for you newer guys, I think you're starting to see the pattern here, right? It's pretty straightforward. There are certainly answers to different mechanics. If it's AoE magical damage, you're going to be dealing with it like with your Yukari, with your New Year's Ray. If there is massive single target threat, you're going to be looking at using taunts such as Nozomi. Otherwise, if there were like AOE physical threats, you'd be looking at characters like Shizuru who provides a physical shield to all of the allies. And all of these are like repeatable learnings that will apply elsewhere as we go on, but like at some point you will outgrow them. But for early game, especially in the later laps, that's probably how you're going to be able to deal with it. Okay, and so after Nightmare, what we do have is the sheep himself. It was like starts with an M. M. Masatham? And so Masatham is the Zodiac boss in which he is a sheep if you guys couldn't tell. And the Zodiac boss, generally speaking, when you get to lap three, they gain extra effects. So for Masatham himself, as you can see, he gained this effect down here. However, let's not get ahead of ourselves and run through each one. So for his UB, he is going to deal a large magic damage to all enemies and additional small magic damage to enemies with bind. And so in regards to the bind mechanic, he is going to periodically bind one of our units. On top of that, he is also going to deal moderate magic damage to enemies within range, so I believe that's uh, within 540 of himself. And then as for the last skill, he's going to inflict taunt on one of our units with the lowest remaining HP. And it seems like this skill actually goes through like any shields or anything. It is 100% taunt. Alright, so dealing with the magical damage, it is exactly as I said before, but dealing with the bind is actually like significantly harder. Especially because if I scroll down here, you're going to see main skill 2, bind for 12 seconds, target equals random enemy. And so here is where we're going to start like seeing a little bit of RNG. So yeah, because of this random element, it's certainly going to change how your battle plays out. However, as newer players, there's not really much that we can do about this, like just gotta pray. You always gotta pray. I mean, you could taunt it if you want to, it might actually be worth doing that. Considering that the unit that got bound is gonna take extra damage, so like you don't really want your DPS eating all of that extra damage, right? Otherwise, to be honest, Ares, the sheep Mersatham, he is pretty straightforward. There's, I think he's probably one of the better ones to start off with. I think it's the next one that actually gets a little bit more brutal. However, with that being said, let's jump into some of the mid late game team comps. And my guys, you already know what it is. It is the CN bros coming through for us yet again because somehow we have caught up with the schedule. All right, so for you newer players, you're going to see the A and you're going to see a number after it. And so what the number denotes is the boss. A1 is going to be your Wyvern, your 2 is going to be your Rai Rai, 3 is going to be your Dragon Guy, and then 4, etc, etc. Now what the A means is the lap. So if you remember, I came over here, this is like your A. So this is your A1, Wyvern. So therefore, your phase 2 bosses, this is going to be your B1, this is B2, B3, B4, B5. And then lastly, you're going to have C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. And that naming is reflected in this document. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of comps, a whole bunch of options, and they are predominantly physical. And let me explain that really quick. The reality 
is, is that the meta right now is very, very physical focused, especially because of Muimi, because of Christina, because of Eriko Yui, Shinobu Yui, Arasa Yui at Christmas Ayane, as well as your New Year's Hiyori. There are just like way too many good physical units that end up just actually out damaging like every other mage comp. So that is certainly what we are going to see over here today. All right. So as you can see, column H, this is the damage of this team comp over here. And what a lot of you will notice is that there is this red head goddess over here. Her name is Kana and she is a CN exclusive unit. So what that means is that any comp that features her, we actually cannot use because she doesn't exist in global, right? So the next best one for us would be like something like that. Or scrolling down uh, this one over here, we've also got these ones over here as well as like this one. And therefore there are actually quite a lot of options. However, for the most part, these are very much end game comps, which rely on tanking, pure face tanking and not playing around those mechanics that we talked about like earlier. So yeah, just dealing with those mechanics earlier, it is certainly a early to mid game thing end game, you're going to be going like full DPS and that's it. All right. So with that said, this is your phase one boss, your Wyvern. And what we have in column K over here are a whole bunch of the timelines. So these are videos, right? So if I click on one of these, it will lead us to a Billy Billy link in which we will be able to watch exactly how this timeline plays out, right? So for example, we have a Kari Yui, Makoto Yui, New Year's Hiyori, Rei Yui, as well as an Arasa. And then what a lot of us do, we actually like go ahead and copy the timings and essentially try to perfectly replicate what the Chinese guys have done over here. So with that explanation out of the way, over here we have all of the comps for phase one Wyvern. And then if I scroll to the right hand side, you will see B1. So this is for our phase two Wyvern. And just by looking at the team comps, you can see it's all physical. Not much is changing. Like you can start like grasping the meta really quickly, right? And then over here, we've got C1, which is Wyvern for phase three. And so that's essentially how we play CB. We <laughs> We copy from the CN bros, let's put it that way. However, towards the bottom, we actually do have some auto comps. So if you did want to like just kind of flick on a switch and go a little bit brainless, it is available. And so the only thing left to explain is that if you scroll down, that's where you're going to start seeing the other bosses. So as you can see, A2, which is your phase one boss two. Scrolling down even more, we're going to see A3. As you can see, we've got Mushusu. And to my veterans, it is exactly as it seems. It is defense down, defense down, DPS. Defense down, defense down, DPS. Literally nothing has changed, guys. That is almost always gonna be the formula. Let's have a look at some of these C comps, actually. Defense down, defense down, DP or tank, because we can't handle it. However, that is an auto comp. So if I come up a little bit higher, defense down, defense down, DP, and S is for support, my guys. Hello, V Shizuru. And obviously, if you don't have V Shizuru, then it's defense down, defense down, DPS. But yeah, that's kind of it for these comps. Oh, I just saw something interesting. So this is the Nightmare, the horse guy. And as you can see, like I said before, Nozomi is used to taunt. However, what you are going to notice is that the damage is actually really, really lacking. 125.1, which translates to 1.25 mil. The physical comps are just way too strong. You're, you're very, very unlikely going to be using any magical comps here. Like, look at that, 250, but the top end is like 290, 280, right? And at that point, like magic is pretty much dead. 171, 165 one, and then we go up to 231 over here. With that, I think that's kind of it. And I'm sorry that this was kind of a blended video because I did actually make this with the intent of like introducing newer players to clan battle. And so to my veterans watching, do let us know any other tips that I perhaps maybe have missed. And I hope you guys enjoyed these timelines brought to you by the CN Bros. Otherwise, for you newer players, hopefully you'll be able to find something over here, like use one of these templates, or even potentially just like build your own team based on these mechanics. Like we've already talked through them. You're certainly gonna have a way better time than us when we first fought this sheep because you have your Muimis and your Christinas and your Vishizus. And so let me know if all of that was helpful down below in the comments. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I'll really appreciate it because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you did like this video, please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, please consider subscribing. But otherwise, as our first arch nemesis once said, Misatham said, your boy actually deadass said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.